Hallo Berlin! Wir sind die German Wrestling Federation und das ist das nächste Kapitel. Das ist GBS Blockbuster! Das erste Match ist angesetzt auf einen Fall auf dem Weg zum Ring. A trio of titles on the line tonight in Berlin. And we promise you as much drama as you get in any Hollywood movie. As for the third time, GWF brings to you a blockbuster. And what a blockbuster way to start things out with this man, Crochester. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Crochester! Crochester, the winner of the Light Heavyweight World Cup in 2022. In this year's edition, just one month ago, will be very disappointed to have gone out in the first round to Tim Stubing. So Crochester, with extra incentive to get himself back in the winner's column here tonight. Und hier kommt sein Gegner. In Begleitung seiner Blutsbrüder Tarkan Aslan und John Bad Bones Klinger aus dem Kosovo mit einem Kampfgewicht von 102 Kilogramm. Er ist der Golden Boy, Mr. Uppercut, der Highflyer Killer, Herr Khan Sultani. Well, the other members of Blues Bruder, John Klinger, Tarkan Aslan, apparently going to leave Ekan Soltzani to take care of business on his own here. You see him holding that little black book. That is the book in which he records the names of all the high flyers who he has proverbially killed in recent matches. And my goodness, it is a substantial list. Most recently, Nick Schreier in the warm-up match for last month's Light Heavyweight World Cup. But... Senza Volto was on that list earlier this year as well. As well as Peter Tioni and Endacara. A real who's who of the high flyers here in the German Wrestling Federation. For the man who stands at over two meters tall, former Berlin champion, former tag team champion. And of course, as a member of Blutbruder, That adds an extra element of danger for anyone who is facing off against the golden boy, Erkan Solzani. Raucous atmosphere here in the heart of the German capital. Fessal Kreuzberg, jam-packed to the rafters as always, Dave Bradshaw. Here to bring you all of the action in English tonight. And as I mentioned, three different titles due to be on the line tonight. And the status of some of our action tonight, at least, is still a little bit up in the air. It's already been a kind of unpredictable day in the sense that the GWF world champion, Pascal Spalter, can't be here. He is ill today. So his scheduled match with John Badbones Klinger, who we just saw, not going to happen. We don't know what that means in terms of what John Klinger will be up to tonight, or indeed what will happen to the rest of Blues Bruder. But we do know right now that Solzani is staying on his feet despite this onslaught early on from Crochester. Crochester hits the arm drag. Picks him up, hits him with the side suplex. And a big kick right to the chest. Standing moonsault from Crochester. Crochester's not messing about here. And he was a, a second away there 
for picking up a very, very quick victory. We do know tonight that the Berlin title is due to be decided. The new champion is Aitash Bahar by virtue of winning the Light Heavyweight World Cup. Oh, Sozani tried for the uppercut there, but it was a really interesting decoy from Crochester. And Crochester, the springboard missile dropkick, going to go for the pin again and another two count. As I was saying, Aitash Bahar, new Berlin champion, going to defend that title against the man who came second in that light heavyweight World Cup, Tim Stubing. By earning second place on the podium, earned himself the first shot at Baha. So that's coming up, plus women's title on the line, tag titles on the line as well. And we will find out who is going to earn themselves the fifth and final mystery mayhem envelope ahead of that big event next month. Soldzani dropping the knee across the throat. And then, uh, whether that was a pin or a, a choke is uh, open to interpretation, I guess. Soldzani sending Crochester face first into the turnbuckle. And a running uppercut. No getting out of the way of that uppercut for Crochester. And things are going from bad to worse here for him. Erkan Soltzani. Remember, two metres tall, which means that Crochester, his feet must be four metres in the air. A delayed vertical suplex from Soltzani. And is that all she wrote? Inside leg is hooked by Soltzani and the right shoulder pops up for Crochester. Well, we'd love to know who you think the winners and losers are going to be tonight here in Berlin. You can join the conversation online, on social media. Use the hashtag GWF Blockbuster and let us what, know what you think as the action unfolds here tonight. The action right now is a pump handle slam from Soltzani, but it's countered by Crochester. Soltzani held onto the ropes. Crochester didn't land the drop kick, but... Soldzani certainly landed the knee, the pin, a very casual pin. And Soldzani, you might say, got what he deserved there for the lackadaisical cover. Another kick out from Crochester. Crochester trying to reach for the ropes. Soldzani, oh goodness, sending Crochester. Down into the, down to the canvas after hitting those turnbuckles extremely hard. Been a hell of a few months for Soldzani as well. Became the first ever two-time winner of the battlefield match back in September. Oh my! Boot up to the face. Crochester showing his agility and then his quick thinking with the power slam. Crochester, top rope, tries for the moon, so gets him on the second time of asking. The pin and the kick out. That was remarkable from Crochester. Saw Soltzani moving, adjusted in midair to land on his feet, and then did another standing moonsault instead. Breathtaking. And hold on, there might be more to come. No, there's not, because Soltzani was smartly able to cut Crochester off. What's Solzani doing? He's told some fans to move and he's sending Crochester into the chairs. It's only the first match of the evening and things already getting out of hand here in Fessau Kreuzberg. Soldani standing tall atop one of those chairs as Crochester struggling to recuperate. Soldani going to drag him back towards the ring here. I wonder if Soldani could have won that by count out, but 
Apparently that's not his intention anyway. Oh, hang on, Crochester is on the apron. Soltani's busy draw jacking with the crowd. He's going to pay the price. Another moonsault finds its mark for Crochester. And now it's Soltani into the chairs. Well, payback, so you know what? For Erkan Soltani at the hands of Crochester. Listen to the noise in here. The support for Crochester off the charts tonight at Blockbuster. Soltani rolled back into the ring. Crochester may be looking to put the exclamation point on this. Takes him down. This time, a second time with the uppercut. And then a springboard uppercut from Crochester. Soltani does go down. Crochester not trying for the cover. Got something else in mind. Dragging Soltani down towards the corner. And the split-legged into the senton. Crochester, will that be enough? No, it won't. I'll tell you what, if this is the taste of the action we're going to get throughout the night here in Berlin, then wow. Buckle up. It's going to be a hell of a night here. And we are just getting started. Crochester checking with the crowd. If they thought that was a three count, it was certainly a two. Uppercut from Mr. Uppercut. Solzani. But he's getting all he can handle and more here from Crochester. Both men gradually back to their feet. Crochester just trying to throw all his weight behind that close line attempt. Both men trying again. Neither man goes down. A war of attrition now between these two, but the super kick does send Crochester down. Is he down or is he down and out? Well, thankfully for him, it doesn't look like Solzani can capitalize. Solzani himself flat on his back. The frenetic pace of this one has meant that both men exhausted at this point. Well, who wants it more? Who has the better conditioning? Who can drag themselves back to their feet when it counts here? Crochester's first up. Crochester with the strikes to the back of Soltani. Once more using the robes on the kick. The low kick from Soltani. That might have knocked him out. The pin and the kick out from Crochester on two and three quarters. Wow. Soltani will try again though for the pump handle. A pump handle slam from Soltani. Might that do it? He's got both legs hooked and another kick out from Crochester. Again, the Crochester chance ringing around the building here. And Erkan Soltani might well be asking what he has to do to add Crochester's name to his little black book. Soltani looking around. You can almost see the cogs in his brain turning. Trying to decide what to do next. So Zani picking up Crochester. Lines him up. Took too long. Crochester's going to roll him up. Can he take one here? No. Enziguri though. Great follow up from Crochester. Crochester off the top. Drops him with the cutter. And now again. Putting Solzani in position. Crochester up to the top. The 450 splash, but the knees went up. The knees went up from Solzani. The shoulders of Crochester are down, and I got him. He got him. Solzani wins. And the winner of this match is 
der Golden Boy, der Blutsbruder, Erkan Solzani. Well, Solzani, I think he's got to count himself very fortunate that he came out on the winning end there. Great smarts from him though, great wherewithal to get the knees up on that 450 splash. Turn it into a pinning predicament and look who's here. Klinger kicking Crochester out of the ring as if he was just a, a piece of garbage. Arkan Aslan as well, both, both of them former GWF world champions. And as I said, John Klinger had hoped that he might become champion again tonight at that scheduled main event against Pascal Spalter. Regardless of what comes next, things have started well for Blutsbruder tonight at Blockbuster. Erkan Solzani with the win, only just, but the win nonetheless against Crochester. The Blutsbruder jacket back on him. And Solzani with a microphone. Halt die Fresse, ja, halt die Fresse, okay. Und noch ein Highflyer wird in meiner Highflyer-Liste eingetragen. Sein Name ist Crochester. Könnt ihr mal ruhig sein, wir sind gerade was am Sprechen, okay? Mal ganz ruhig. Danke sehr. Apparently Klinger has something to say. The others are leaving him to it. Punkt 1, das ist doch ein Witz. Pascal Spalter ist nicht krank. Pascal Spalter kneift einfach nur. Genau, er ist eine Pussy. Ich bin hierher gekommen, um ein World Title Match zu bestreiten. Ich bin der verdammte Main Event. Aber wenn Pascal Spalter der World Champ knallt, dann nehme ich auch gerne den Berlin Champion. Well, hold on, Klinger saying he's going to challenge for the Berlin title. If he can't challenge for the world title, the brand new Berlin Champion, the winner of the Light Heavyweight World Cup, apparently going to give his response to that challenge right now. The gold was skirt around the waist of Aitash Bahar, the Adana bulldozer. Well, Bahar's already got a match tonight, remember? He's supposed to defend the title against Tim Stubing. But now Klinger issuing a challenge. What's Bahar going to do here? Also. Eigentlich habe ich mich nur auf einen Gegner fokussiert für heute, aber ich bin ein Fighting Champion. Ich 
Nimm jede Herausforderung an. Bones, du willst einen Kampf im Main Event haben? Ich bin dabei. Apparently it's on, but yeah, I'm not surprised. Well, this young man has something to say about it. If Bahar is facing John Bad Bones Klinger, what does that mean for Tim Stubing? Remember Stubing, the runner-up in the light heavyweight World Cup, and therefore had earned himself that Berlin title match tonight. Ibo Latino accompanying Tim Stubing, and it's Latino who apparently is going to respond on Stubing's behalf. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Haltet eure Schnauze! Okay, okay, okay. Langsam wird's langweilig, ist okay. Also. I think these fans' opinion of Stubing is pretty clear. Okay, who is it? Latino's getting drowned out here by this noise. Da müssen wir wohl warten. Well, before Latino had a chance to speak, here comes Ahmed Chair, the man in charge around here. What's he got to say about this? Entschuldigung, ich unterbreche euer Kaffeekränzchen da im Ring sehr ungern, aber die Leute sind hier, um Wrestling zu sehen, okay? Ja, und ich wollte doch nur eine Sache sagen. Ich glaube, der Standpunkt ist klar. Tim, ich frage dich nur, nimmst du an? Bist du dabei? Okay, 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 ich verstehe, ich verstehe. Machen wir es einfach, ich übernehme mal für Tim. Ich gehe einfach mal davon aus, dass du dabei bist, richtig? Ja. Dann machen wir das ganz easy, Jungs. Bitte räumt den Ring. Ihr habt sehr gerne die Möglichkeit, heute im Main Event Tim gegen John Klinger, gegen Aitor Baha um den Berlin Champion Titel. Wow, what an announcement that is. Baha, Klinger, Stubing for the Berlin title tonight in our main event. Also es steht jetzt fest, wir haben einen neuen Main Event, ein Triple Threat Match um den Berlin Title. Aber das ist ja nicht das einzige Titelmatch, was wir heute haben, oder? Seid ihr bereit für den ersten Titelkampf des Abends? Der nachfolgende Kampf ist angesetzt für einen Fall. Es ist ein Relaxed Rules Match. Das bedeutet, der Ringrichter wird vielleicht nicht ganz so genau hingucken, was hier im Ring passiert. Und es geht um die German Wrestling Federation Tag Team Championships. In Begleitung des originalen Flying Dragon des King of Hardcore Ali Aslan. Aus Istanbul in der Türkei mit einem Kampfgewicht von 92 Kilogramm. Der Sultan of Wrestling, Jim Kaplan. Sein Tag Team Partner aus 069 FFM. Ah, 
The tag team title's about to be on the line, and I'll tell you, the last time these two teams met, it was chaotic, to say the least. Back at strike first, strike hard in January. The match had to be called off after they brawled through the crowd. And then a series of chairs got involved. The referee had no option but to stop the match. That shouldn't happen tonight because the rules have been relaxed. And here come Ihre Gegner. Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions Team Crazy Sexy Team Crazy Sexy sporting brand new Tag Team Championship belts tonight They have held the titles for the second time since November at Legacy 27 Victory there in a ladder match Secured them the championships. And really, you'd have to say there is no team that has made any more impact in the tag team division over the past year here in GWF than these guys. Crazy Mike Chair, sexy Ronaldo Shakiri. Will that title reign continue? Here tonight, it was a very close affair. That strike first, strike hard last time these two teams met. And if if the match hadn't devolved into a brawl that had to be called off, I really don't know if we would have been able to pick who would have won it. And again, relaxed rules here, which means essentially no disqualification. Bell rings, and here we go. Referee only going to call this off in the most extreme of circumstances. There should be a winner between these two teams tonight. The Mike Chair trying to run into Jem Kaplan. Kaplan going to get a neck breaker for his troubles. Kaplan, the so called Sultan of Wrestling. This is boot up, but crazy Mike Chair just a little bit ahead of him at the moment. Drops the elbow off the turnbuckle. Kaplan going to now suffer the wrath, I think of Ronaldo Shakiri, Shakiri to the ropes and a boot run to the face of Jem Kaplan. Shakiri going to force Kaplan to kick out of an early cover which he does after a count of one. Team Crazy Sexy with a victory last month as they've continued to defend their tag team titles. Last month it was the Kendo boys at the Light Heavyweight World Cup. But this unfinished business with Kaplan and Ahura has been looming over them ever since January. Maybe we can get it resolved now. Ahura tagging in. Meanwhile, how he has, oh my goodness, was that, was that a low blow? That's relaxed rules, I think, is what Ahura is saying, and he's right. He's not going to be disqualified for that. Kaplan's going to take out Mike Chair. Ahura telling the fans he can basically do what he likes. Relaxed rules. What is Ali Aslan doing? Ali Aslan's got some tape here. He's tying Mike Chair to the ring post, for goodness sake. Kaplan with the shoulder thrust and... Ahura choking away at Shakiri. Of course, there's only supposed to be one legal man in the ring at any given time, but again, the rules are not really in play here, so there's a limited amount the referee can do about it. Ali Aslan, a hardcore legend here in Germany, the king of hardcore. 
and he has been the king of making sure that his protégés pick up the victory by any means necessary. Him and Kaplan have a very long and storied history. Ahura, the latest recruit to the Aliasan stable, forming this tag team with Jem Kaplan, which looks increasingly like it's going to be a very effective tag team. Boot goes up though from Shakiri, who's having to battle two on one at the moment. Mike Chair trying to free himself from being taped to that ring post. There's a Samoan drop from Shakiri. And Shakiri buying himself a little bit of time. Referee's trying to help crazy Mike Chair to release himself. The discus lariat from Catban. Catplan, such a powerhouse. As long, as, as long with his uh, career as a pro wrestler, a very experienced power lifter is, is Jem Catplan. Catplan, after handing that chair to Ali Aslan, he's going to watch as Aslan goes to town here on Crazy Mike Chair. Catplan. And Ahura still. Oh my goodness. I was going to say still in charge. They're more than in charge at the moment. They are delivering an absolute beat down to the tag team champions. Kaplan getting the boot in. Jim Kaplan and Ahura. Still dominating, and Ali Aslan's helping him out. Ahura's still got the chair. And once again, brings it down across the spine of Ronaldo Shakiri. Are we watching the dying moments here of this tag team title reign for Team Crazy Sexy? Kaplan and Ahura both had chairs in hand, and... Ahura, I think, heard the charm from the crowd. Gone looking under the ring. And he's found another steel chair. What else might be under there? Well, it's all legal with relaxed rules. Kaplan adjusting the furniture. That chair has already been bent across the back of Kaplan. Placed on two others. Kaplan. Now with the shots. And more and more damage to that, that back, that left shoulder. Of Ronaldo Shakiri and Ahura's going to join his partner back in the ring. Mike Chair still out of commission. Still unable to free himself. But Shakiri once more battling back. Ahura though, it's a leaping strike and a kick to the side of the head. I think Shakiri is uh, Shakiri is knocked out. Well, they could end this right here, could Ahura and Kaplan, but uh, they're not done yet. They're gonna. I think they're gonna make Shakiri pay a heavy price. Look at Ali Aslan directing traffic. Aslan is sadistic, and he wants his men to. I think maybe to powerbomb Shakiri through these tables, or through these chairs, excuse me. Kaplan has him up on his back. I'm not sure what they're planning here, but whatever it is, I need to hurry up because Shakiri's going to be able to fight back, and that's exactly what he's doing. Shakiri to the ropes, spear. Both Kaplan and Ahura go through the chairs. And Crazy Mike Chair has released himself. Chair is in the corner. Well, Chair is at least abiding by the rules more than his opponents are. He's waiting for a tag before he comes in here. Ahura and Kaplan 
slivering towards Ronaldo Shakiri to try and stop him making the tag, but he does anyway. Here comes Crazy Mike Chair. And Mike Chair gonna do a number here on his opponents, forcing Ahura to DDT. Jem Kaplan. A sent on bomb. Oh, Chair might get caught though. Crucifix pin from Ahura. Yeah, Chair needs to be careful. Mike nearly got himself caught out there by Ahura. Ahura's going to try for a pile driver and he gets it. Mike having to roll to the outside. There's Ahura Nagi from Shakiri. Shakiri taking the baton, so to speak, here from Crazy Mike Chair. Kaplan's got Shakiri up though, drops him down. And Shakiri might be in almost as much trouble as his tag team partner is after that pile driver. Shakiri trying to feed off the energy of the fans here in Festal Kreuzberg. Now what's Aslan doing? Aslan reintroducing one of those chairs. Kaplan's going to wedge it between the top and middle turnbuckle. And you can imagine what his intentions are here for Ronaldo Shakiri. Going to try and put his skull through there, but no. Brakes go on for Shakiri, and it's Kaplan who goes head first through the steel. Jim Kaplan hitting hard, bone on metal there. And now Ronaldo Shakiri up on the second turnbuckle. Oh, but look. God, that was a hurrah. A hurrah through the chair. A hurrah through the chair right into Shakiri. Shakiri was about to launch himself onto Kaplan. I guess desperate times called for desperate measures there. A hurrah now. And to regain his balance up on the top. Ahura! Driver the Hurricane he got caught! Shakiri held on! Ahura in no man's land here! Power bomb on Ahura! Ronaldo Shakiri gets him up! The buckle bomb on Ahura! Oh, and a collision with Jem Kaplan. Kaplan did what he had to do to cut off the momentum. Oh, he has him throwing Mike Chair back into the ring. Kaplan's going to look for the Sultan Smash on Mike. Ahura kicked to the head into the Sultan Smash. Jem Kaplan with the cover. Uh, will it be? No, it won't. Mike Chair getting that right shoulder up. Kaplan, I think, believed that he and Ahura were about to become tag team champions. Kaplan's not done, though. He's got the chair. They'll keep battering the tag team champions. Oh, my! Kaplan hits Ahura. Ali Azan trying to warn Kaplan. Crazy Mike Chair is there. Azan! Oh, Azan had the drink, but it hit Kaplan. A pair of critical miscues there from the challengers for the tag team titles. The sent on bomb from Crazy Mike Chair. The pin and the tag team champions retain. And the Sieger in this match and damit weiterhin German Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions. Crazy Mike Chair, Sexy Ronaldo Shakiri, Team Crazy Sexy! Oh, it was every bit as chaotic as it was first time around, but with that relaxed rules stipulation, and despite the interference repeatedly from Ali Aslan, Team Crazy Sexy took care of business tonight at Blockbuster. New title belts and all, Ronaldo Shakiri.
and Mike Chair. Still the tag team champions here in the German Wrestling Federation. Ali Aslan seething with rage as his troops regroup at ringside. Kaplan and Ahura getting out of here. Aslan is beside himself. Ahura and Kaplan continuing to argue. Not much harmony there, but plenty of harmony between Crazy Mike Chair and sexy Ronaldo Shakiri, who are still the tag team champions here at Blockbuster. Das nächste Match ist ein Singles Match angesetzt auf einen Fall. Und es geht um den German Wrestling Federation Women's Championship. Auf dem Weg zum Ring. Aus Straßburg in Frankreich. Sie ist der Giant Killer Mila Michel Schmidt. Mila Michel Schmidt, former women's champion, held that title for 154 days, all the way up until Legacy 27 back in November. It was in a battle royal on that night. But she lost the title without ever being pinned, of course, under Battle Royal rules, to Kara. Kara now getting pretty close to that 154-day mark herself. Currently on 133. So if Kara were to win one-on-one -on -one against her predecessor, then she would go on to surpass that mark. High stakes then in this women's title match for Kara and Mila Michelle Schmidt. Begleitung von Big Nick aus Darmstadt. Sie ist die amtierende German Wrestling Federation Women's Champion, die sagenhafte Kara. Kara on her way to the ring and she hasn't come alone. Look who's with her. Big Nick. So in the past couple of months, she's been hanging out with and using his size to her advantage. Kara and Big Nick with this alliance, which I'm sure is mutually beneficial. Indeed, the pair of them won an intergender tag team match last month for the Light Heavyweight World Cup. That victory was over Bennett Brown and Lena, certainly. Very impressive one in our pre-show for that light heavyweight World Cup, but Kara, the women's champion this month here at Blockbuster, putting her title on the line. There's no doubt though that Kara has been proving her pedigree as of late. Last month as well, over at Project Nova, another Wrestling promotion here in Berlin. Got a victory over the former interim GWF Women's Champion, Laura Di Matteo. So Cara going from strength to strength during this increasingly impressive Women's Championship reign.
I think it's fair to say a majority of the support here in Festal Kreuzberg is for the former champion. Big Nick being told to leave the ring so that the match can get underway. It was in a match against Kara, a three-way match with Jesse J. But Schmidt won the title in the first place. Jesse J was the champion back then in June last year. It was a rising heat. So Schmidt and Kara, one way or another, know each other very, very well. And you just heard that from Kara saying right in Mila Schmidt's face, this is my title. Well, is that true? The talking is over, we're underway, bell rings and an immediate sweep of the leg there from Mila Schmidt. Schmidt looking to twist of that left ankle of Kara. And Kara's onto her front here, I'm not sure if that's necessarily going to help because Schmidt's still got a hold of the ankle, but an elbow to the face will certainly help Kara. Big throw though from Schmidt. Kara going to get sent into the corner. A running uppercut from Schmidt. Mila Michelle Schmidt. Seemingly, at the moment at least, on course to become women's champion once again. Big Nick looking on the ringside with concern. Well, Big Nick's got his own things on his mind. Got a match against Peter Tihoni later. And Big Nick, one of the envelope holders for Mystery Mayhem, which is the next time we're going to be with you here in Berlin, May 7th. Dropkick from Mila Schmidt. Schmidt going for the cover. Kick out. Of course, on that night, May 7th, the holders of those five Mystery Mayhem envelopes We'll get a shot at whatever championship is contained on the piece of paper within their envelope. So Big Nick still with no idea who he's going to face next month. Schmidt here going to the ropes, but the boot comes up from Kara. Kara looking for the pin, leg hooked from the women's champion, and the right shoulder comes up from the former champion. Kara now, picking up Schmidt, got her by the hair, going to throw her by the hair, uh, referee not sure about that, but Kara, I think claiming innocence, the one thing that's certainly done is enraged Mila Schmidt, and Schmidt getting thrown again by the hair. And once again, Kara, being given free reign here to just pull the hair of a, a challenger for the title. And referee might need to be a little less lenient towards the women's champion. Fireman's carry now from Kara. Schmidt with the elbows to free herself. Goes behind. Sends Kara to the ropes. What well, a roll through couldn't roll with her to get her into a pin. Uh, Big Nick looked like he was going to try and sweep the legs there of Schmidt instead. Schmidt with a sunset flip and a kick out from Kara. Keeps the women's title in her possession for now. Uh, elbow right to the throat there. And Kara using all the force she could to send Schmidt very awkwardly into the ropes. Bad landing there for Mila Schmidt. Look at these mounted elbow strikes now from the women's champion. Schmidt trying to cover up. Now those shoulders being forced down into the mat, but Mila Michelle Schmidt getting that right shoulder up off the canvas in time. Schmidt, I know, has felt that ever since losing that battle royal that she should have had the chance once again to challenge Kara. Kara's had victories since then over the likes of 
Michelle Green. Of course, been in that mixed tag match that I talked about with, with Big Nick. But right now, Schmidt is in control here against the champion. Cara, though. That very aggressive streak that I think has become much more pronounced since she's been hanging out with Big Nick. Schmidt found a way to get back into this, though. Going to go for the Bulldog. Face first, lands Cara on the canvas. Look at panic on the face of Nick at ringside. Tilton well head scissors. Cara. Couldn't quite put the brakes on as much as she wanted to. The strikes to the right side there of, of Schmidt. Kara now trying to hyperextend that right arm. Big slap across the face from Kara. That one knocked Schmidt down. And then just throwing her. The back of her head bouncing off the canvas. She'll go for the pin, will Kara? And Schmidt gets that right shoulder up. Kara's going to try again. Force her to kick out again, which she does. And a third time. And once again, Schmidt forced her to use up some of those reserves of energy in order to kick out of three consecutive pin attempts from the women's champion. Front face lock into a suplex position. Fisherman suplex maybe from Kara. Can she get it? Yes, she can. Has she got her hands gripped together? It's going to be hard to kick out if she has, but maybe she didn't have the grip she wanted because Schmidt did kick out. Kara straight to the submission. The cross face. Schmidt quickly adjusting her body position to prevent too much pain being inflicted there. Able to free herself, sends Kara to the ropes. Clothesline from Schmidt. And Schmidt now, a lightning fast belly to belly suplex. Schmidt will go to the ropes. Catches that with an overhead neck breaker. The pin from Schmidt. Will that win her the women's title? No. Mila Michelle Schmidt, less than a second away from regaining the gold. But still we go on here. Schmidt still on top. Still taking the fight to Kara. Schmidt runs in with the knees, but Kara had moved out of the way. She may have damaged her knees. That collision with the turnbuckle. Meanwhile, Kara puts her knee up. Might have knocked out Schmidt. No, she hasn't. The right shoulder comes up. And this women's title match continues. Second of three championship matches tonight at Blockbuster. Remember, we now know Berlin title match tonight will be our main event. I tax Bahar defending against Tim Schubing and John Klinger later on. Kara with Schmidt on the shoulders. Kara having deposited Schmidt on that top turnbuckle. Trying now for, looking for a superplex, I think. Schmidt determined not to let that happen. Slips out underneath, takes the leg away. Kara may have headbutted the turnbuckle. And Schmidt planting Kara. Is that enough? Can she turn her over? Can she regain the women's title with both legs? Oh, no, hang on now. Well, hang on. Big Nick pulled the foot of Mila Michelle Schmidt. I don't think the referee saw that, but Schmidt certainly felt it. She knows exactly what happened. And Kara able to block the hold there, or block the strike attempt rather. Schmidt with that free left arm, and now a headbutt. And a second one to Kara. Into a crossface of her own. The crossface. The fans want Kara to tap, but will she? Look, Big Nick again. 
A referee, I think, caught him that time. And she's, and she's tapping out, but referee can't see it. Referee busy arguing. Well, that distraction from Big Nick may have just saved the title for Kara. Schmidt absolutely determined to convince the referee, but it's the roll-up. The roll-up from Kara and the victory for Kara. Kara has stolen it. Und damit die Siegerin und damit weiterhin German Wrestling Federation Women's Champion, die sagenhafte Kara. Well, that is very, very harsh on me and Michelle Schmidt, who had the tap out victory secured, but the assistance from Big Nick proving pivotal once again as this alliance continuing to reap benefits for Kara, who is still the GWF Women's Champion. Das nächste Match ist angesetzt für einen Fall auf dem Weg zum Ring. And he returneth to the German Wrestling Federation for the first time since January when Axel Tischer became the first person to earn himself a Mystery Mayhem envelope. He will, of course, cash that in next month at Mystery Mayhem. So is he just a month away from championship gold? Either way, psychologically, he's going to need a win here to prepare him for that big, big night next month. And here comes sein Gegner. in January. He had a chance to win a Mystery Mayhem envelope, but was unlucky in his efforts there against Big Nick, who we've already seen tonight. So Mudo going to try and put a dent in the preparations here of Axel Tisha. As Tisha heads towards Mystery Mayhem on May 7th. By the way, immediately following this match, the fifth and final Mystery Mayhem envelope match will be between Marius Alani and Senza Volto. One of those two men going to claim the last available envelope, which will give them a Mystery Championship opportunity just one month from now. The Axeman and the martial arts expert, one on one. This is the first time that Tisha and Mudo have ever faced off in the German Wrestling Federation as the bell rings. I would say this is going to be hard hitting, but to say that I don't think would necessarily do justice to what we might be about to see. Yeah. 
Tisha and Mudo. Despite the bell having rung, neither man wanting to be the first to dive in here, neither wanting to make a mistake against an opponent with whom they're not particularly familiar. Now, collar and elbow tie up to start this one off. Tisha, of course, was a champion here in GWF. He was the world champion until June last year. Tisha playing some mind games here with Mudo. But the bottom line is that Tisha is going to have a title opportunity of some kind next month. Would like nothing more than to become a two-time GWF world champion during the month of May. By the way, for all the news and ticket information about Mystery Mayhem and all of our future events, gwf-wrestling.com is the place to go. Event every month of the year here in Fessal Kreuzberg in Berlin. Where the GWF has become a part of the city's DNA. Kick from Mudo. Mudo standing with his hands behind his back, almost inviting Tisha to come at him. Tisha with the shove. Oh, oh my goodness, what a kick! What a kick from Mudo, and that is the danger with fast time Mudo. Quite possibly the hardest kicker in European wrestling. He's got to be up there. There won't be many people in Axel Tisha's long and storied career who have kicked him as hard as he just got kicked there. Well, Tisha back in the ring, he's regrouped. The pain, I'm sure, still radiating around his body after the impact of that kick. And Tisha tried to get a cheap shot in there, but Mudo was able to second guess it. Same thing from Mudo and the same result, but Mudo now with more of those kicks. And Tisha can't afford to absorb too many of these. Gonna get sent to the corner, but he counted it to Tisha. Now big back body drop. Mudo just about lands on his feet. Gets a hurricane run, a takedown. And a hip toss from Mudo. A swing and a miss with a kick there. Mudo though, able to go behind with the rear waist lock. Elbow from Tisha, frees himself. Counter from Mudo though. Look at these strikes from Mudo. Arms and legs. Every part of his body a weapon. And Mudo with the clothesline sends Tisha to the outside. Fast time Mudo. Gonna leap over the top. And Tisha had moved out of the way, but he didn't move out of the way of that running kick. And a running somersault dive. A painful landing for Tisha. It might not have been the most comfortable of landings either on that hard arena floor for Fast Time Mudo. Kick from Mudo. Uh, Axel Tisha writhing in pain from this onslaught at the hands of Mudo. Mudo, another kick. At this rate, what's going to be left of Axel Tisha, regardless of which championship he's going to challenge for? Next month of Mystery Mayhem, it's going to be a big night one way or another. Oh, and the kick this time missed. And Mudo's boot going right into the steel. Tisha following up with a boot to the face. That one have helped his condition. And how much damage has been done to that leg? The pin from, from Tisha, a kick out from Mudo, but... Now Mudo has got some considerable pain on that left leg and Tisha sees it. And Axel Tisha homing in on that weakness. Left shoulder came up for Mudo on the pin attempt, but 
It looks like a wounded animal here. Does far side Mudo. Mudo with a, a look of fear as he looked up at Tisha there, realizing that Tisha knows he's in trouble. Uh, shin breaker right across the knee. Fast time Mudo in all kinds of jeopardy. The kick out. Even kicking out will jar that left leg even more. Was that kick into the ring post? The pivotal moment here for Fast Time Mudo against the Axeman. Body shots from Mudo. A couple of kicks. Second one gets grabbed though. The Dragon Screw takedown. Again on that left leg. And it's the left leg that he hooks. But Mudo kicks out with the right. Tisha taunting Mudo by mimicking that limp on the left leg. Now Tisha going to try and force a submission out of Mudo, twisting and tearing at that left leg. Drops his leg over the leg. Look at the angle. Look at the angle of the knee of Mudo. Tisha with his left arm hooked under the foot here to further increase the pressure. Mudo trying to somehow free himself. Oh my goodness. The taunt on that left leg. Oh, it's finally been released, but it was inhuman while it lasted. I know the adrenaline is flowing, but even so, how much strength can possibly be left in that leg for Mudo? Tisha was asked for a, a clean break there and gave one at least briefly, but now look again. Jamming that left leg. Once more trying. Has Mudo still got something left? Yes, he has. Mudo holding on to the leg. There's Tisha. Who has been, as I said, laser focused on that. Since Mudo with that kick to the steel ring post on the outside. Tisha with a, an evil smirk emerging across his face there. Uppercut from Tisha. Tisha. Run up there's a boot to the face from Mudo. Mudo's leg is caught the Enziguri. Mudo found a way out of that dead end. Mudo, has he got enough power in the leg? It looks like, I mean, it's causing him pain, but he's still getting full connection on those kicks. But that might, that might do it. That might do it. Oh, or maybe not, because with the right leg now, the right leg, a spinning heel kick from Mudo. Tell you what, this is a, a scintillating contest between these two. Another spinning heel kick, this one in the corner. Mudo now with that low strike. Seen him hit that so many times before. And now Mudo, can he get up to the top? Yes, he can. Mudo trying for the double foot stomp, but Tisha moved out of the way. Tisha trying to take out the left leg again. Couldn't do it this time. Mudo with the pin and a kick out from Tisha on two. Fast time Mudo finding a way to not just hang in there, but to come very, very close, half a second or less away from victory here. A gutsy performance indeed from fast time Mudo. Who's using the ropes here to pull himself back to his feet? Mudo lining up the black belt kick, maybe. Oh, he didn't have enough power in the leg. Didn't have enough power in the leg. That might have saved Axel Tisha. Tisha with a variation on the half crab. Mudo not allowing himself to be turned onto his front, uses the right leg to kick away at Tisha. Mudo's going to have to tap if he can't find a way out here pretty quickly. 
Mudo trying to keep himself from being turned fully over. Once more gets himself onto his back, able to kick Tisha away. Back to his feet here. Spin and a miss with the kick. German suplex with the bridge from Tisha. It's another two count for the Axeman. Tisha quickly back to his feet and charges into Mudo in the corner. Suplex from Tisha. And Tisha! That running knee right to the temple. Mudo's got to be out. Mudo's got to be out. Oh, he's not. Well, he wasn't unconscious, but he can't have been any more than semi-conscious. Mudo, some part of him heard enough of that referee's count to know he had to pick his shoulder up off the canvas before that, that hand hit the mat for a third time. And he was able to do that. It was almost a... Almost muscle memory, you feel like, from Mudo, but there still doesn't seem to be much left. Tisha going to try for the Liger Bomb. Oh, Mudo, counter! The pin from Mudo! The shoulders are down for two and three quarters! Tisha tried to grab that left leg again, Mudo. Once more with the kick attempt. Got him on the second time of asking. Mudo to the ropes. It's popped up and dropped down. Tisha rolling through. Oh, hey, Mudo's got him. Mudo's got him. The double arm face buster. Mudo. Surely. Can he? Oh, he can't. The left shoulder came up. Fast time Mudo. Despite everything. Despite the beating he has taken, particularly on that left leg, still was, oh my goodness, just what, an inch away from the referee's hand hitting that mat for that decisive third time. Tisha is down. Mudo is down. Which of these two men is going to win? This absorbing first time showdown between these two here at Blockbuster. And elbows from each man. Tisha once more grabbing and twisting at the leg. Mudo again using the right leg to free himself as he has done a number of times, but Tisha's still got a hold of that leg. Tisha, I think, looking for that half crab again. Oh, into the triangle choke! The triangle choke from Mudo! Where did he pull that out from? Tisha might be going to sleep if he doesn't tap out! Look at Tisha, he's moving his body, moving his body to try and get his foot on the rope, and he does. Tisha, even in that desperate moment, had enough wherewithal to adjust his body, get to the rope, force the break. And Mudo, what a strike with a forearm that was. Tisha and Mudo just knocking chunks out of each other here. Bicycle kick from Tisha. Mudo, the elbows. The combo from Mudo, the knee to the side of the head. And Mudo again will line up for the black belt kick. Can he get enough blood flowing through that left leg this time? Oh, he could, but he got blocked by Mudo, or by Tisha, excuse me. Tisha dropping that. Dropping that left leg, the drop kick from Tisha, who's going to pick him up. The horrible slam from Tisha. The hook of the leg, and the axe man is the winner. And the Sieger dieses Matches, Axel, the axe man, Tisha. My God, what a match! What a match that was. And the courage of Fast Time Mudo to keep going essentially on one leg for half of that. But ultimately, it is the ruthlessness of the Axeman that wins the day as Axel Tischer heads to next month in this very building, May 7th, at Mystery Mayhem in Berlin. Tischer will challenge for a championship 
We don't know which one. He doesn't know which one. But if Axel Tischer got his way, then this time next month, you might be looking at the next GWF World Champion. What does the envelope hold for Axel Tischer? We still don't know that, but we do know that tonight held for him a victory over Fast Time Mudo. Das nächste Match ist ein Singles Match angesetzt auf einen Fall. Und es ist das Match um den letzten Mystery Mayhem Umschlag. Auf dem Weg zum Ring. Paris in Frankreich mit einem Kampfgewicht von 90 Kilogramm. La Sensation Française, Spencer Volto! He is the French Sensation, former Berlin Champion, Senza Volto. And Volto would love to taste gold again. Here in GWF, if he wins this match, he'll get a chance to do just that by claiming that fifth and final Mystery Mayhem envelope. Senza Volto with a big opportunity here tonight at Blockbuster. Volto, a real crowd favorite here in Berlin as he is wherever he goes. But he knows this is a very, very big night for his GWF career. Opportunity beckons for Senza Volto. Ich rufe seinen Gegner in den Ring. Auf dem Weg zum Ring aus Erfurt mit einem Kampfgewicht von 93 Kilogramm. Mr. No Bullshit. It's a very apt nickname for Marius Alani. He is a no-nonsense competitor. That much is certainly true. A real fighter who will dismantle an opponent if they give him even a sniff of an opening. Alani had a hell of a first round match last month for the Light Heavyweight World Cup against Aitash Bahar. We know, of course, that Bahar went on to win that and indeed to win the whole tournament, but, but Alani still undoubtedly one of the most dangerous competitors in all of German wrestling, indeed, anywhere in Europe. So we are underway here for this match to determine who will join Tim Stubing, Ahura, Big Nick, and Axel Tischer as the Mystery Mayhem envelope holders ahead of that most unpredictable night of the year on May 7th. Volto with a shoulder block. Alani, though, he is put together as Marius Alani. He doesn't go down, instead, he hits a drop toe hold. Floats over and never any wasted motion from Marius Alani. Volta with a wrist lock. Alani once more able to grapple himself into the superior position. Takes Volto down. Volto though will quickly kip up. 
Alani trying to run at him, but Volto with those lightning fast reflexes gets the arm drag. And if you can keep Alani grounded, stop him from hitting some of his power moves, then that is uh, going to be a crucial part of the strategy here for Volto. But the trouble is that Alani, so good as an all rounder, he can compete with the best of them down on the mat as well. Now, look at this from Volto. Sends a Volto, another arm drag. Some showboating from the French sensation. Alani getting frustrated, misses a couple of clotheslines. Volto tried for the swinging kick. Alani follows him to the ropes. And a Hurricane Rana takedown from Volto. Alani needs to get his head in the game here. Needs to do it quickly. Remember, the opportunity for one of these two men. Could be a, a Berlin title match, tag titles, who knows? Any of the championships here in the GWF could be on the line. Could one of these men be the next GWF world champion? Alani oh, charging at Senza Volto. Lands on the apron, Volto follows him. The drop kick from Volto. Alani oh, sent down to the floor. And you know what Volto's thinking here. Volto to the ropes and dives between them to wipe out Alani. Sends a Volto in charge of things here against Marius Alani. By the way, if, if either of these men needed extra incentive here, don't forget about the, the ranking system we now have in GWF. Both of these men currently on zero points for 2023, but every time you compete in the German Wrestling Federal, oh my goodness, a kick from Alani. The equivalent of a low blow. Hang on now, roll up. No, and a kick after the nip up from Alani. Alani, the mounted punches here. I was about to say the winners of any matches, singles matches at least here in GWF, get three points if you win by pinfall or submission, two points if it's by count out or disqualification, you get a point for a draw. So at least one of these two men is going to get off the mark here tonight. And in the process, gain themselves that envelope. Now Arnie, drop kick right to the back of the neck. Referee checking the Volto is able to continue. And he is, but he is not exactly in prime condition. After Marius Alani here has rained down hell on Senza Volto. Alani picking him up, slowing the pace. And this suits Alani way more than it suits Volto. He can keep things with this methodical tempo. And every time Volto gets up, he's just knocking him down. But Volto getting fired up. And Volto, despite that, gets knocked down again and again. Look at the tenacity of, ten of Senza Volto. Uh, hold a one arm, using one of his to close line. Chop from Volto. The fighting spirit of Senza Volto never ceasing to amaze. Reversal of the Irish whip, but the handspring cutter from Volto. Volto to the ropes. Leaping clothesline. Takes Alani down. Volto. The adrenaline flowing now. Feeding off the energy of the Fessau Kreuzberg crowd. Alani tried to fight back, but Volto sweeps the legs. Alani rolls back into the middle of the ring. Volto, code red from Volto. The pin off the code red, and that gets a two and a half. Sends a Volto. Very, very close to winning that mystery mayhem envelope. Volto having a discussion with the referee about the count, but I think it's uh, not so much a criticism of the referee as it is disbelief 
Well, Arnie was able to survive. Survive he did. This match goes on. Alto with the chops on Alani in the ropes. Alani fighting back, trying for an overhead belly to belly suplex. Couldn't get it, Volto. Those strikes. And instead, he'll get the German suplex. No, he won't. Volto lands on his feet. Volto lands on his feet. The knee into the jaw of Alani. Alani's grabbed him now, and now he does get the belly to belly suplex. Alani. The power slam sits down on the shoulders, on the head of Senza Volto and gets two and a half. Alani, close but not close enough to winning that last mystery mayhem envelope. Now stomping on the ankle. Again, Alani never takes the time to reflect on any near falls immediately gets back on it he's got the ankle lock here the ankle lock from Alani he gets that locked in fully and Volto would have to tap but Volto before it could do that got out of it Alani's beaten many many opponents with the ankle lock and now he has got it look at the angle of the ankle the ankle lock now Marius Alani Volto trying to get to the bottom rope before he has to tap he didn't get there, he swipes at it, and now he gets to the middle rope. Oh, Alani drags him back to the middle. And Volto, this time, able to roll through. Send Alani to the outside. Sends the Volto, surviving the ankle lock somehow. Kicks Alani in the head. Buys himself a little bit more time. Volto. To his feet. We saw him do this earlier. Oh, we didn't see him do that. The overhead kick, the heels hitting the face of Alani. And Volto over the top. Vaulting over the middle rope. Using it as a springboard to wipe out Alani. One of our ring crew got wiped out as well. well we need some medical attention for that young man at ringside. But meanwhile, thankfully the action... Going back inside the ring, is the inside cradle from Alani. Kick out from Volto. Alani, kick to the midsection, reverse of the Irish whip from Volto. Volto went for a clothesline, couldn't get it, but he does get the Spanish fly. Will that be enough to win in that envelope? No. But Volto, middle rope, top rope. The moonsault, Alani tried to move out of the way but couldn't. Alani's shoulders are down, but they're not down for three. Senza Volto coming as close as either man has to winning the match, winning that mystery mayhem envelope. Still we continue though, between Volto and Alani. And a blockbuster of a match. And a blockbuster of an event. The referee is counting them both down. He's up to a count of four is the referee. Volto looks to be in better condition than Alani, I think. Volto is first back up. Grabs Alani. Volto's going to look for the Eiffel Tower. Lifts it up. Couldn't get it. What a counter. What a counter from Alani. Into the submission. Alani's going to put Volto to sleep here. God, that was well scouted. So well scouted from Alani. Alani rolling through. He's going to go back to the ankle. Going to go back to the ankle. Another ankle lock from the relentless Marius Alani. Volto again rolling onto his back. He had some success getting out of the hole that way before. Alani though hooks the other leg. And whichever leg he leaves free, Volto is using to kick at him. Alani still trying to twist that ankle. Alani, big right hand to Volto. Volto's going to fire back. Alani was 
Knocked for six there, it felt like by that strike. A stamp on the fingers from Volto, went for the kick. Arnie once more, tr trying to get those arms wrapped around Volto. Volto once more escaped it. Arnie again kicking away the leg, again into the ankle lock. Go look at the angle this time. Can Volto somehow defy the odds again? Can he survive the ankle lock again? Alani, absolutely merciless, but Volto once more is trying to kick himself free. What's Alani doing? Alani flips him up, kick to the midsection though. Well, Volto got grabbed by Alani. Volto will try again. Alani went with a high knee, couldn't get it. Volto, handspring. Get caught, got caught. Another great counter. Another great counter by Alani. Alani has to be careful, his shoulders don't go down. Alani, once more, trying to lock in that submission. Trying to put Senza Volto out. Referee once more checking the shoulders of Alani as he rolls one way, then another. Trying to keep his grip here on Volto. But Volto rolls through. Alani followed him, get into the ankle lock. Goodness me. He just does not stop. Alani just does not stop. Volto gets to the ropes. And Alani again gives him no respite. My God, the suplex, the kick. Alani just will not stop. Looks for the diamond driver and gets it. Alani hooks the leg. And an impressive Marius Alani is going to mystery mayhem. And the Sieger. Dieses Matches und aber der Träger des letzten verbleibenden Mystery Mayhem Umschlags, Marius Al-Ani! A hell of a match, a hell of an effort from both men, but envelope number five for this year's Mystery Mayhem is in the hands of Marius Al-Ani. What fate does that envelope contain? What opportunity does it hold for Alani here in Fessal Kreuzberg on May 7th? A huge night ahead next month for Marius Alani. Das nächste Match ist angesetzt auf einen Fall. Pack die Tanzschuhe aus! Im 19. Bezirk von Budapest in Ungarn mit einem Kampfgewicht von 90 Kilogramm Peter Tihani. Well, last month Peter Tihani made the final of the light heavyweight World Cup, defeated LJ Cleary in the first round, eventually finishing in fourth place in that tournament. But I said it last month, and I'll say it this month as well. Peter Tihani has the vibe of someone who may just be on the brink of a very, very special spell of their career. Still in his early 20s is Peter Tihonyi, but he is being talked about as one of the most exciting talents in Europe. Und hier kommt sein Gegner. In Begleitung vom GWF Women's Champion der sagenhaften Kara aus Berlin 
mit einem Kampfgewicht von 125 Kilogramm und einer Körpergröße von 2,10 Meter. Er ist der größte Profi-Wrestler Deutschlands. B First of all, what an effort that was from Virtual Hot Ring announcer, but Big Nick, every bit as big as that announcement suggested. And again, just as Kara didn't come out here alone earlier, these two inseparable at the moment. Big Nick having already made his presence felt tonight, helping Kara in her retention of the women's title. And now Kara. I'm sure if she gets the opportunity, we'll look to return the favor here for Big Nick against Peter Tioni. As I said earlier, Big Nick, one of the, another one of the uh, Mystery Mayhem envelope holders for next month. But before he can focus his attention on that upcoming championship opportunity, got to face off against, as I said, one of the hottest talents in Europe, or possibly in the world right now, in Peter Tihoni. Bell rings, and look at the height difference. Big Nick, who's had a very successful basketball career away from the ring. And you can see, he certainly has a height for it, but Tihoni can have to use his speed, his agility. Big Nick, the more powerful of the two, as you see there. That shoulder block, sending Tioni down. The reach advantage, clearly, with Big Nick. The strength advantage with Big Nick. Peter Tioni now, at this point in his career, been wrestling professionally for about five years, Tioni, and he, he knows that he has faced opponents bigger than him and stronger than him before. Big Nick trying to play some mind games. Trying to, I think, instill a sense into Yoni that knocking him down is going to be impossible and that, therefore, Big Nick's victory is inevitable. Nick grabbed a hold of Tioni, who turned his back on him within reach. A little bit of a mistake there from Tioni. Can't trust Big Nick not to exploit that. A big boot of Big Nick choking out Peter Tioni. Tioni, though, there's that speed. The chops from Tioni. Peter Tioni. Perched now on that top turnbuckle at the hands of Big Nick. Thought about kicking him as he came in. Uh, Nick letting Tioni stand up there. And that might be a mistake. Tioni very, very well at home. Well, hang on a minute. Mentioned his basketball career, but Big Nick apparently bursting the basketball. With a sign language there, and he nearly got his finger broken as a result of that. But Nick, Nick a big handprint across the chest of Peter Tioni. Drop kick gets swatted away. The elbow doesn't find its mark. That time the drop kick does for Tioni. A clothesline will send the big man to the outside. Looks like he's found another basketball. Certainly found some more sign language. Nick on the outside. Tioni building up momentum. And Kara, what is she doing? Kara has absolutely no right to be on that apron. And as a result, Big Nick, who may have been about to suffer from Peter Tioni diving onto him, instead has the advantage now. He's sending Tioni into the steel ring post there. Well, that ring post has 
already had its influence tonight. Did its damage to that left leg of fast time Mudo earlier. What a match that was. Big Nick hoping that this match isn't going to be anything like as close. Wanting to end things against Peter Tihoni. Suplex into a throw there. And Tihoni, his eyes widening as the pain just surges through his back off of that landing. Tihoni backed into the corner. Sent to the other corner and lands hard in the turnbuckles as Tihoni. Remember, it was Kara's influence. Her getting up on that ring apron that turned the tide here in favor of Big Nick. Just as he helped her to retain that women's title, maybe she has been the turning point here in this one. Now what? Hey, look, Kara choking. Kara is choking Tihoni. Big Nick with a deliberate distraction on the referee. And the referee has no idea what just happened behind her back. Nick now sending Tihoni from one corner to the other again. This time though, Tihoni comes out fighting the elbows from Tihoni. Trying to cut down this big tree that is Big Nick. Tried for a backdrop, couldn't get it because it's countered into an attempt at a sunset flip. Uh, big boot and now the elbow and just like that big nick with the ability to turn things around big nick lining up peter tioni for the big boot oh my god it nearly took tioni's head off his shoulders big nick looking to win it and tioni kicked out well, car is certainly surprised by that i think Given the sound of that impact on the big boot, I think she's not the only one who's surprised. Fans here in Berlin never cease to be amazed by the resilience, by the will to win of Peter Tioni. That nerve hold. That big hand. Just squeezing. Into that sore spot for Peter Tioni. I don't know if Tihoni can find a way out of this here. The big Nick just towering over Peter Tihoni. Tihoni somehow has got back to his feet. Big Nick changing tackle as a reversal from Tihoni. A big back body drop. How did he do that? On someone the size of Big Nick. Peter Tioni always defying expectations. And now Tioni back on offense. Tioni sent to the ropes, comes firing back, goes to the ropes again, again fires back. Nick just trying to shove him away. Tioni though takes him off his feet this time. Well, earlier on, Big Nick was giving off the aura that that wouldn't be able to happen. Tioni found a way. Kara checking on Big Nick. And Tioni going to the ropes. Well, Tioni had to change plans and he changes direction. Finally gets his opponent down in the entranceway. Tioni rolls him back in. Big Nick is reeling. Tioni off the top. Tioni with the crossbody. A hook of that giant right leg and a kick out on two from Big Nick. Kara screaming at Big Nick. For a while, I think she thought that he had this one sewn up. It is on a knife edge now between Tioni and Nick. Tioni 
Getting back into the corner after Nick grabbed his leg. Elbow right to the jaw of the big man. Dioni too fast there. Nick gets another shot to the face with the elbow. Here comes Dioni. Cross body once more, but big Nick will roll through. Look at the sheer power of this force of nature that is big Nick. A running power slam. Dioni tried to get straight back up, but he's going to get slammed straight down. Big Nick with the pin. Oh, Dioni kicks out again. Goodness me. Unbelievable stuff here from Peter Tihoni. And the person above all who can't believe it is his opponent. Big Nick arguing with the official. Tihoni gasping for breath. Despite his condition, still kicked out. Wait now, hang on. Big Nick's got that women's title belt. Kara handing the women's championship to Big Nick. And Big Nick arguing with the referee. Look, Kara's on the apron. It's another distraction. It's another distraction. Nick oh, almost hit Kara. Tihoni moved out of the way. Running into Guri from Tihoni. That plan backfired. Leaps over the top rope, hits the cutter. And hold on now. Tihoni riding the elevator to the top floor, but Kara pressed the emergency stop button. Kara gets kicked away. But Nick had a chance to get back into it. Slap across the chest. Now Big Nick looking for what would be an enormous superplex. Tihoni will be right up in the rafters here. If Big Nick hits this, I can't see any way out, even for Peter Tihoni. Tihoni slips down though. Tihoni slips down. He's got Big Nick. Got him up. Power bombs him down. And he'll climb again. Up to the top goes Tihoni. Nails the 450 splash. Hooks both legs, and Dionye defeats Big Nick. And the winner dieses matches, Peter Dionye. My word, what a big 450 splash. And a big, big victory over Big Nick for Hungary's own. Peter Tihoni. It is celebration time for Peter Tihoni. What a win that is for that young man. But coming up next, it is our main event. The new Berlin champion, Aitash Baha, defends against Tim Stubing and John Bad Bones Klinger. That's next. Es ist Zeit für den Main Event von GWF Blockbuster. Das Match ist angesetzt für einen Fall. Es ist ein Triple Threat Match und es geht um den German Wrestling Federation Berlin Championship. You're looking at the leader of Blutz Bruder. And a man who one month ago at the Light Heavyweight World Cup had an absolute war in a no disqualification, no count out match against Mike DiVecchio to become the number one contender. Well, the number one contender for the GWF world title. He was going to be challenging for that. Pascal Spalter out ill tonight. And so Klinger has been able to work his way 
into a Berlin title opportunity instead. Can Klinger claim an unexpected championship win here tonight? A title he wasn't even supposed to be challenging for, and yet he could win it here in our main event. He might well be the least popular man in the building. But Tim Stubing, by virtue of his second place finish in the light heavyweight World Cup last month, made himself the number one contender for the Berlin title against the man who beat him to win that light heavyweight World Cup, Itash Baha. It was meant to be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for immediate vengeance for Tim Stubing and his mentor Ibo Latino. But now unexpectedly, a three-way match featuring John Barbones Klinger, the most dangerous man, he says, not just in European wrestling now, but the most dangerous man in all of effing wrestling, to use Klinger's words. Tim Stubing might be the most hated man in all of wrestling. The 5th of March, 2023, turned out to be the biggest night of this young man's life. The Adana Bulldozer, Itax Baha, defeating Marius Alani in the first round. And then in the final, victory over Peter Tionyi, Ahura, and Tim Stubing to become not just the winner of the Light Heavyweight World Cup 2023, but also the Berlin champion. The stuff that dreams are made of. Last month for Itash Baha, but could tonight, just one month later, be the stuff that nightmares are made of. That is the objective of both Tim Stubing and John Bad Bones Klinger in the main event of Blockbuster. This is the main event from GWF Blockbuster 3. To my Linken, the first Herausforderer aus Bad Bones City mit einem Kampfgewicht von 106 Kilogramm. Er ist der most dangerous man in European Wrestling, der Blutsbruder John Bad Bones Klinger! Der nächste Herausforderer kommt aus Hannover mit einem Kampfgewicht von 86 Kilogramm. Er wird begleitet vom ehemaligen GWF Berlin und Tag Team Champion, seinem Coach und Mentor Ibo Latino, Bad Tim Stübing.
und an meiner rechten Seite. Er kommt aus Adana in der Türkei. Er wiegt 96 Kilogramm. Er ist der Gewinner vom GBF Light Heavyweight World Cup 2022. Der amtierende GBF Berlin Champion, der Adana Bulldozer, High Touch Baha! The formalities are done with. All that remains is the match. fight. Chili, und das ist der Titel, um den es geht. Der prestigeträchtige GWF Berlin Championship. The Berlin Championship will be the prize for the winner of our main event tonight. Will it be Aitash Baha's music playing again, just as it was at the end of the light heavyweight World Cup? Can Tim Stubing get revenge for what happened last month? Or can John Barbones Klinger claim the Berlin title? Well, Klinger with an immediate shot to the current champion. Nibo Latino up on the apron. Klinger getting attacked from behind there by Stubing, a distraction from Latino, allowed his protege Stubing to do, to do just that. Stubing with a chop across the chest of Itach. I'll tell you what, Tim Stubing, if he were to win the Berlin title tonight, to say it wouldn't send the fans home happy, is putting it mildly. You might need a police escort out of here. Look at Baha now. In control now with the right hands. These two have become very familiar with each other in recent times. With a drop kick. Great height on that drop kick. Kick the champion right in the face. It's shooting, but hold on a minute. That most dangerous man in all of effing wrestling. Is proving a clear and immediate danger to Tim Stubing. Klinger, of course, with the, the record for the longest GWF world title reign of all time. It's power like that. That's one of the reasons why sending Stubing hard into the corner. Might do the same on the other side. Yes, he will. That uh, opportunity at the world title that Klinger was due to have tonight, I'm sure, will be forthcoming at some point down the road. And good, oh my goodness. Klinger sending Stubing kind of by the towel across the ring. But hang on, here comes Baha. Missile drop kick off the second turnbuckle from Itash Baha. Stooping on the outside, reversal of the Irish whip from Klinger, goes for a clothesline, but it gets ducked. Leaping forearm smash there from the champion. And the Adana bulldozer building up ahead of steam here. Ducks a clothesline from Klinger. Tilt and whoa, head scissors take down. My touch Baha, who these fans here in Berlin have seen grow. A product of the GWF Wrestling Academy. Hold on a second. Ebo Latino back on the apron. And Stubing grabbing the arm. And now, hang on a second. Now, look at this. Latino sending Baha into Stubing. The power slam referee was checking on Klinger. He's out of position. And that might be what saved Itash Baha from a free count there. Face first into the turnbuckle goes Klinger. Stubing follows up with an uppercut. The hatred of these fans here in Berlin apparently fueling Tim Stubing as he hits the drop kick. Stubing turning Klinger over. Goes for a lateral press. Right shoulder comes up for Klinger. Aitash right, Bahar there was less than a second away from losing the Berlin title without even being involved in the decision. Such is the nature of a freeway match. 
Klinger. We turned him round, but the elbow smash from Tim Stubing, a much more aggressive Tim Stubing nowadays than he ever was before he was with Evo Latino. He rakes at the eyes. Stubing, hang on. Stubing tried to move out of the way, but Klinger knew what he was doing. Kicked him right in the ribs there. Klinger with a vertical suplex. He'll try for the pin, and Klinger gets two. Meanwhile, Baha rowing his way back into the ring, is he? I think he still needs some recovery time. Klinger with a chop right to the throat of Stubing in the corner. Stubing's going to get sent to the opposite corner. Klinger tried to follow him in, the boot goes up. Stubing able to avoid Klinger there, kicks him around the side of the head. Stubing, knee to the side of the head of Klinger, sends him to the outside. Now Stubing can turn his attention to the champion. But Baha takes him by surprise to a victory roll for two. Baha blocking the striking attempts from Stubing, hits a few elbows to the side of the head. Stubing going to regain the upper hand, he's going to get caught here into an Uranagi from Baha. Baha goes for the cover and a kick out on two from Stubing. Stubing picked up, but Klinger's back in. Oh, Klinger with a code breaker. A movie learned from Chris Jericho himself. And Klinger. Going to the ropes, diving low, wipes out Latino and wipes out Tim Stubing as well. I think there's another ring crew member in there. As well. The bone spear from Klinger. And now the pin on the Berlin champion to win the championship, but the right shoulder again. Saving Itach Baha, who had enough power left to kick out. The leader of Blutz Bruder, looking to add yet another championship to the lineage of that faction that has dominated the German Wrestling Federation for years now. Klinger trying to pick up Baha, the Adana Bulldozer still fighting. Determined not to let anybody take away that Berlin title that he worked so hard to earn just one month ago. Klinger though getting the better of that exchange, sends Baha to the ropes, picks him up, a DDT! I think Klinger was looking for the spine buster, but in mid-air, Itash Baha countering into the DDT! Klinger flat on his back if Baha can make the cover! The fans cheering on their champion. Clinging out, crawling back to his feet, but look who's back. Tim Stubing sliding under the bottom rope. Hits a super kick to Klinger that knocks him down. Baha's back up. And Baha gets the elbow up as, as Stubing runs in. Close iron from Baha. And an elbow sends Stubing down. Stubing a wild swing there and he paid the price. After missing it, the suplex from Baha. Baha firing up. Oh, Stubing got the elbow up into the face. A spine buster. Baha with a spine buster to retain the title. Shubin kicked out and he had to because Klinger wasn't there to prevent the pin. There's a PK from Baha. Can he get him this time? No. A hell of a main event here. This three-way match for the Berlin title. Klinger looking for the pile driver. Baha crawls under the legs. There's a half Nelson into the suplex from Klinger. Klinger with a kick to the head of Baha. Has he knocked out Itax Baha? He might do of all, no. Right shoulder came up for Baha. 
And Klinger, who has made a career of killing people's dreams, might have, could have just ended that title run, that dream title run of Aitaj Mahal just one month in. It almost came to pass right there. Here comes Stubing. Oh, Stubing. He calls out the Herrenhauser cutter. The pin from Stubing and a kick out from Klinger. That name, Herrenhauser cutter, a reference to the district of his hometown in which he grew up for Stubing. Whatever the name, wasn't enough to win in the Berlin title. Shubing turns his attention here. Back to Aitach. Shubing slapping the face of his rival. And now they're eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose. Shubing comes back with more strikes. Oh, but Bahar beats him to the punch. And now Bahar's going to look for the Yashar driver. Stubing knew it was coming. Stubing with experience of that. He's got Bahar up. And he drops the back of the head across the knee. Bahar is hurt, but Stubing knows he needs to turn his attention to Klinger. Klinger wriggles free. Klinger with a ripcord lariat attempt. Stubing ducks it. Klinger with a bicycle kick right to the face of Stubing. Bahar with Klinger up, here's the Yashar driver! Oh, but Klinger rolled away, and now Stubing! Stubing's got Bahar! Stubing trying to lift him, Bahar though! Bahar has him up! Wait, Stubing escapes! Stubing escapes! And tried to lift him into a power bomb, but the two men end up Crumpling down to the mat, there's a brain buster from Stubing. And Stubing hooks the leg, Klinger. Klinger breaks it up. John Klinger breaks up the pin. And still our main event goes on. John Klinger. Who's he going to go after? He's looking at Stubing. Bahar still down. Klinger and Stubing exchanging rights. Right hand. Another. Both men exchanging blows. The elbows from Stubing now a chop from Klinger. Could one of these two men pin the other and become the Berlin champion? Maybe Stubing will. Stubing with the kick. Oh, Stubing trying to lift him. Rolls through. Klinger follows him, picks him up. Klinger pile driver. The pile driver from Klinger. Stubing was dumped on his head there. And look where Klinger is going. John Klinger up on the top. Looking to nail Stubing with the descent into badness, and he does. Oh, but this is Bahar. Bahar shoulder tackling Klinger, and Bahar's gonna go for the pin himself. The pin himself, he's got him, he's got him. Bahar retains. And the Sieger dieses matches, and damit weiterhin German Wrestling Federation Berlin Champion, der Adana Bulldozer, Aitaj Bahar. Aitash Bahar surviving double jeopardy tonight. The dual challenge of Tim Stubing and John Badbones Klinger. But in the end, it was Bahar who was able to take advantage of that three-way dynamic. And after Klinger hit a descent into badness, he sent the most dangerous man in all of FN Wrestling packing and got the pin on Stubing himself. Not just a great victory, but an intelligent victory for the Adana Bulldozer, who continues to go from strength to strength here in the German Wrestling Federation. Ein großen Applaus für euren GWF Berlin Champion Aitaj Bahar!
the second month in a row, a GWF show ends with Itash Bahar celebrating. God, what a year this man is having. But what he doesn't know is who will challenge him next. Because next time we're with you here in Berlin, it's going to be May 7th. It's going to be Mystery Mayhem. One of five envelope holders will challenge Baha. The other four will challenge for other titles. As Klinger stares down the man who just beat him, Aitash Baha and the rest of the GWF roster head into May and into the most unpredictable night in the German Wrestling Federation, Mystery Mayhem.